So talk about an awkward family reunion, casually getting the information that your sister, who mentally is three years old, has been imprisoned within kind of like your own psyche in a way. So she's been watching all of those moments that are quite intimate, all things considered. And as hilarious as it is to kind of think about the concept of just your sister ended up getting jealous of your harem and because of all those moments, it's actually pretty tragic when you take a step back out of the hilarious memeing because when you think about it, right, she was mentally three years old. She's a mentally three-year-old walking nuclear bomb. So for her, she doesn't comprehend what a sex scene is. She doesn't comprehend these more intimate actions. So for her, it's just, here's a female that I'm jealous of because why do you get to spend the time with Big Brother? And then there's another and another and another. And it creates this rage of a child who has been in prison, trapped, couldn't get that affection from her brother, and apparently any other girl can. So it's hilarious in the way that when you think about it just at a surface level view, it's kind of hilarious and only an anime, but when you take a deeper look at what's actually happening, it's actually pretty tragic to see what this girl has been suffering through in terms of being that lonely, all things considered. But yeah, I mean, all things considered, this was the War on the Harem episode, really, if you break it down. The thing that was pretty shocking was the fact that Kisara was apparently using even her own memories to basically power herself up. So not only did Shu end up getting his own memories back, she also got her own memories. And that makes it even more painful because, I mean, just to see Shu in that state, so confused, so conflicted because he has all these pieces. Yeah, there's some funny moments about how he slept with a girl and used a high nose credit card or something to that nature. There's some funny moments that definitely flood back into him, but for the most part, it's a pretty painful thing of, like, realizing what people meant to him that he completely forgot about. And I really thought what they were going to do was they are going to build up into him kissing Kasara in the hospital bed there. Like, it just felt like that was the direction they were going. Like, he's like, okay, this is the, the final hump, the final hurrah that makes him commit to Kasara over the others. But the fact that he went for the forehead kiss made it so much sweeter and I think more impactful because this is similar to even his own sister. Like, this is just a small aspect of who they once were. And it's not right for him to, you know, say like, oh, this is the Kassara I fell in love with or the Kassara I've had feelings with. Right now, she's just a girl who doesn't know right from wrong or left to right and we need to protect her. So I like that he went with that more comforting angle. And the fact that they end the episode with the same type of message that he would leave himself. Whenever he lost his memories, he would write on his hand so he would remember. And as we see, the whole idea of fighting together. I mean, truthfully, I thought they were going to make a new contract in this episode or something to that nature. And then, as we saw, he ended up boring the powers of a demon and was fighting quite well, all things considered. Had he not gotten blindsided by his crying sister, it's entirely possible the fight could have ended in this episode. But because he got blindsided, we see the catastrophic events that took place, and she was quite a violent menace. And I'm not exactly sure how they want to end the show with one episode to go here, but I'm interested to see because right now it's the whole idea of imprisoning, and maybe that's where a second core, a second season could come in in terms of like actually finding a solution for the sister. But as it stands, we need to basically trap her for now because they won't be able to free her as is, but maybe that will be a surprise contract in itself. I don't know. The thing I quite appreciate about Engage Kiss is it definitely had a vision of where it wanted to go ever since the beginning, rather than just randomly getting good halfway through because they finally figured out what they wanted to do. Now, the whole concept of memories and this kissing transfer in terms of, you know, when you look at it on paper, right? The show's called Engage Kiss and the contract's made by kissing, right? Yeah, it's basically a succubus-like connection, but still, you could see how people from a distance would say, why the hell am I going to watch a show where people kiss to power up? But when you consider the connection, the romantic undertones, and how it all kind of connects, it's more than just something that's silly at face value. It actually serves as a narrative point, and that's why I like the sister reveal as well, because in any other show, you would just say, like, oh, that's just anime being anime. The sister accidentally watched some inappropriate things that her mind maybe shouldn't have seen especially given that they're family and also the mental age of the character. But when you consider just how this is just a trapped girl who's been prisoned, doesn't know the difference between a hug to a kiss to anything more extreme, the fact that all these girls got her brother's affection other than her, it's no wonder that when Kassar's on screen, or Aino is, she'll lash out and basically launch nuclear war on them. But when normal humans shoot at her, well, she can just put up a force field and it's basically like a mosquito that can't get through the screen door. So I like the fact that everything about this makes sense. Like, on one hand, it's funny to think about certain things, 
But the thing that makes me excited about this show and recommend this show to people is that it actually has substance to its writing quality, and I quite like that. There's a couple of derpy faces here and there, but for the most part, the action when it came to, I mean, I never knew I wanted to see Shi with a sword basically acting like Kisara, but leave it to this show to prove me wrong. If you watched my recoil video, I mean, I also said a similar thing that I'm about to say here. Originally, I was pretty okay with both Engage Kiss and this being like a one core season, like a 13 episode run seemed perfect, but it almost feels like with where Engage Kiss is also going, it feels like there is room for more. And yes, this is a multimedia project, meaning that a mobile game was being made alongside the anime at the same time. The game comes out, I think fairly soon, maybe sometime next year. So we know there's going to be lots of characters, lots of story points that they could make anime of, but you could easily see how, I think up until this point, one season seemed reasonable, right? Where you could leave it off and say, that's great, if you want to go play the game, go ahead, but the anime's well, well and done, like we don't need to see any more. But I think with where they want to go, it seems like they want to imprison the sister, and then maybe that could be a season two of figuring out a way to solve that issue with other things that will come in to try to cause issues for the city. Or maybe they will resolve the sister plotline and she will be free next week, but still you can see how with the memories now back and maybe a second season propelling where Kisara's story could go, because I don't, I mean maybe she'll get her memories back at the end of next week's episode, but at the same time, kind of like the idea of her not having her memories for a season, similar to how Shu did. And don't get me wrong, this could all be mindless speculation and there will never be a second season so this could all be for nothing, but it almost feels like the creators are trying to say, we want you to consider the possibility that you saw the show from one perspective with Kisara just taking these memories, this guy seeming like he has no damn connection to anyone, but apparently he's a moocher, he's just a shitty person. Imagining a season two with either maybe the sister plotline still being in the equation, or potentially Kisara having to have a similar situation to that of Shu, like, you know, it, it's interesting. I actually really like the, the idea of that, and for two shows, both of which from A1 Pictures, both Recoil and Engage Kiss, they made me go from saying, you know, I love this show, I think it's great, I think it's one of the stronger shows of the season, sometimes some of the stronger shows of the year, and to go from saying I don't need more to saying I need a season two, it feels good I have to say. Because often the thing that I like about original anime or stuff that doesn't have a source material release just yet, like in the case of kind of like a multimedia project, which is a kind of odd situation where it is kind of based on something but isn't. I like the concept of originals because they end, but these two shows from A1 feel like there's so much potential for more than just 13 episodes, while still feeling like they could be a self-contained story within said 13 episodes. And that's why I leave the second to last episode of Engage Kiss with a grin on my face saying, this show does feel like it gets better. I like the fact that characters aren't flawless, I like the fact that characters aren't perfect people, and the sacrifices that have been made and the fact that our main character is saying I no longer want to sacrifice to get to my objective because he's regained everything. He's seen what it cost him in the long run because of all the shit that happened when he didn't have his memories. That's the type of character growth you love to see in a show like this and why I'm very eager to see how the show's gonna wrap up in episode 13. But thoughts, feelings, theories, if you got any down below, if you want to see a season two like myself, do let me know. Leave like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.